Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Well, I'm Don Burns. We're here at Cohatch. Thank you, Cohatch, for letting me use the facility. Thank you, Cohatch. We have Ashley. I forgot your last name. Troutman. Troutman. And you are representing? Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual. And that's like personal finance, investments, retire early. Yeah, yeah, we deal with wealth management um, and overall engaging in the financial planning process for um, individuals, um, but we also um, operate on the, within the business of, a, of an individual as well. Um, I would say sitting at the, at the seat of their, of their business planning team. Uh, so sometimes that includes uh, making sure that they have proper benefits, making sure that they're looking ahead about how they're gonna su succeed or uh, leave the business, how they will leave it well with succession planning. Um, and then also uh, making sure that key employees are, are taken care of as well. So uh, we also have that side of the, uh, of the business as well, but the majority of the time is spent working individually one-on-one -on -one with folks in cap and understanding the vision that they're casting and how our products and, and services can, can help them achieve that goal. Fantastic. So making sure that all the employees are happy and the benefit package, if they accept it, that everything is together, that everybody's going to be happy and you're going to provide the service of being an employee and you're going to provide the service of benefits and all that. Yeah, absolutely. And we have strategic partners in that area. So um, I'm, I'm more of a handoff in that particular uh, part of the business. But again, most of the time our, our team members engage in um, the planning process with uh, with the with the individual client that we that we work with. Wonderful. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been in the industry itself for oh man, um, close to to twenty years now, um, but on my own for about a decade, um, building my clientele base. And I made a transition um, about four years in to the Northwestern Mutual um, organization, mainly because of the the reputation of the of the brand. Um, and as a financial advisor, we want to, oftentimes we want to associate ourselves with a, with a reputable, reputable brand, but also uh, want to uh, have the best tools that we can leverage for our clients um, as well. And uh, Northwestern Mutual provided that uh, for us. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a client of Northwestern Mutual myself. I, uh, I did a bunch of research um, and actually on my life insurance policy, I went with another company for the first couple of years and I wasn't happy. I mean, they were charging this and charging that. I was like, I'm gonna look into that. And so I let that lapse. Mm -hmm. And I actually waited another year or two and I did my research and it turns out Northwestern Mutual was number one. Yeah. I said, why wouldn't I wanna be with the number one? Yeah. They're gonna, if God forbid something happened to me, they're gonna pay the policy. Exactly. And it's mutual, so everybody's involved in it. Yeah. So I like that brand, yeah. even myself. Yeah, yeah, when they're very dominant. The brand, I should say, is very dominant in the um, risk management space. Uh, one of the best carriers out there, as you mentioned, 200, over $280 billion in assets that in the general account. Um, so they're solvent, has the highest um, credit rating uh, out in the marketplace. Now, as a Northwestern Mutual uh, affiliate, I have the privilege of exclusively offering those products, but then we also are not limited by our agreement uh, to only represent Northwestern. So I have a, I'm actually a broker for a number of other carriers as well. Oh. But oftentimes I'll lead with Northwestern because as you stated, 95% of the time it's the right solution for, for most of the clients. Um, and when it doesn't fit, uh, we have that, that ability to um, tra not transfer, but to place them with a, with a different carrier. Uh, but we also, the, the brand itself is also a, a top five in assets under management. Um, as a whole, uh, so we're we'll, we're right up there with LPL. If if you're a Lakelander or a Central Florida person, you'll probably recognize the LPL as being um, the partner that um, Allen and Company recently transitioned to. Um, so they transitioned to be to be in the in the space that uh, we were in technology wise. We were ahead of um, ahead of uh, places like an Allen and Company just from a technology standpoint. Not to say that their advisor advising services were, were terrible or anything like that, but technology-wise, the things that they could that their clients had access to, we were already in that space, having um, the ability to aggregate different accounts on their on their client website, um, and and um, having electronic processes in place. 
Uh, that's where we were, and that's um, and then we're, we're, we're so we're right up there with the with the best of the best when it comes to the wealth management side as well. Yeah, the, the world is going digital, uh, AI, all of the software that can manipulate and find exactly. So you have a bigger toolbox, Northwestern Mutual, this one, this one, then, and you can uh, get to any client's needs. I mean, yeah. any client that comes in that wants to believe in you, exactly, have got the tool to take care of them. And I, and I recently met with uh, with a guy, a business owner here in town. Um, I mean, this particular conversation comes to mind because I shared with him. I said, you know, I have blind spots. You know, I. I my, even though it sounds like I've been in the in the industry for a while, and on my own for a while, I still have blind spots. I'm limited. We all are limited. Um, but the opportunity that I have is the ability to, to partner with uh, people all across the country uh, that are a part of the organization as well. Uh, some here in town, but um, you know I can call on people all all up in D.C. somewhere uh, sometimes if I need uh, support in a particular case or whatnot. So. Uh, that's that's another thing that makes it unique, um, I believe, as well. Yeah, that's a that's a mutual part of Northwestern Mutual. Everybody wants to help everybody, provide the services that are rec needed and recommended. So, tell me more about Ashley. Where are you from? Are you originally from here? Yeah, um, born and raised. I'm I'm so, somewhat of a unicorn, um, as as people tell me at least. Um, but whenever they, whenever I tell them that I'm born, I born I was born here. I was raised here, I live here, I work here. Um, I've never lived anywhere else. They, they look at me like Are I'm you a, a museum artifact. Yeah, I'm you know? telling you, I'm looking at you that way right now. I'm like, holy Toledo. <laughs> but you know, I always follow up and say, man, I can show you a lot of a lot of artifacts if you want me to. It's a lot of, it's a ton of um, native, native folks that are still here. Um, I mean, a couple of business guys that are very successful here in town. Um, Sometimes you will find that their their families have been in here for generations as well, um, but I what I hope that um, that doesn't mean is that you don't, the only way that you can be successful is that you just um, are are born and bred here. Hopefully that's not what it sounds like. Hopefully that just shows you that um, when people are here, they care for the community, uh, they care for this place, and they just want to stay and try to make it the best place they can make it. Well, it's, it's <clears throat> nice running into you because I know you're now you're a resource, but you've already established yourself. And on a personal level, I know that you are a uh, you are a known person in town and a, a valuable resource in any area. Yeah, I'm seeing you as a as a future mayor myself. Uh, I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> We're going to have you as a mayor. And I got you before. I had to interview you before you made it because. Tell me you have any aspirations in the political realm. Well, um, let me back up for a second because when you asked me about myself, I'm, what's constantly ringing in my head is, is the fact that I have not mentioned uh, some of the most important people in my life. And I'll come back to your question. Let's do it, let's do it. Um, but my wife, I am married. Uh, my wife is also a business owner herself here in town. She's involved in skincare and wellness coaching uh, for, with clients. Uh, she's big in big in the health and wellness arena. Um, she's also um, been a realtor for, uh, I believe, the past six, seven years as well. And oh, we wow. have two children, um, three and one. So my wife Kia and I. My new daddy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it gets a little rough sometimes, but uh, we love them. Bryce and Ellis, uh, three and one, um, are our sons. Uh, my wife has told me that the factory is shut down, so she's not having it. <laughs> so that's why I told my wife too. So that's enough too. Yep. So um, those are those are important people to me. So I, I just want to make sure I mention them. Priority one. Yeah. It doesn't get more priority than that. Exactly. I believe that one hundred percent. Exactly. Exactly. And of course, being a, a native here, I, I do have siblings. Um, two two other siblings and nieces and nephews, cousins. My mom and dad still live here as well. They're both in their 70s now, uh, still still going strong, it seems like it. But um, So yeah, I, I have a have a long history here in town. Um, one of the, the people that have influenced me quite, um, quite, a, quite a bit over the years is a gentleman by the name of Gal Fields. I worked for him for about six and a half years uh, prior to going out on, on my own. And so I always tell people I, I would not be 
honest with you if I t didn't tell you, if I told you that my time with him didn't influence me, because it did. Um, when that when that opportunity or when would that time be? I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, to, to engage in the public uh, service arena, um, and we'll, but we'll see. We we that's something that my wife and I talk about whenever um, certain opportunities that come up. Is it the right time? Um, how does it impact my family? How does, does it impact my business? And those are kind of the priorities that I look that I look at it through. Um, is it, are we healthy enough in those areas to? Um, take on that extra responsibility because it's a big it's a big task and um, it is something that uh, does impact those areas so you just want to make sure certain things are kind of sure up uh, before you do it at least if you want to do it well I would say absolutely yeah so if you want to take it serious and yeah yeah I am uh, I'm 100% without a doubt family's priority one when when you don't make priority family priority one in my opinion you're off track yeah. Everything is after that. I mean, God first, but family life and mm -hmm. priorities is number one. And that's why, that's why, um, cause I've been a, I was a maintenance man for 20 years, repairing dish machines and washers and dryers. And I did not do anything social, anything that would take away the priority of raising my kids. Mm -hmm. And my daughter just graduated high school a couple weeks ago. Right. And now's when I get to play a little bit, and that's when I started I Am Lake, and now I get to play for myself. My kids are still my priority one, mm -hmm. but because they're now a little bit older, they're gonna start taking care of themselves and whatever, but they're still up there. Yeah, what school did she graduate from? She just graduated from McKeel. Oh, cool. Yeah, and my son graduated from McKeel a couple years ago, and uh, he's at Polk State, and she's going to go to a school called VAMP okay. in Orlando, and they create, uh, cosmetology school, yeah. um, prosthetics. Okay. So she wants to get into that. We just went to Toronto and she did this lip lab thing where you get to make your own lipstick. So she's really into oh, wow. all of that. She's Very cool. having fun. And you talk about a resource. There's a lot of um, entrepreneurs here in town that are um, that try to create their own products in that area. So she could possibly, possibly partner in. in That's right, the, yeah. She's um, got her own following. She's got like 8,000 followers on TikTok. She's yeah. blowing me away. That's cool. She, she's got a big following. So uh, back to your wife and her business. What is the name of her company? Um, Healing Hands. Healing Hands, because I ran into you at the table when she's been there and you've been out there too. Yeah. I remember. Yep, yeah. she, she had a, I think she at the time, she, she had curated a um, wellness box. Um, she called it a spa box. Um, but she curated some items from local and regional um, makers and put these items in the in the box together. And she was, um, at the time, I think she was promoting that that um, retail item um, of her of her brand. Um, but she spends a lot of time with her hands, uh, healing hands, uh, caring for people's uh, facial uh, needs, and and there's also some other stuff. I won't get in that because I'll mess it up. And but just I'd love to have her. If you if you want to relax in time, if you want to if you are having a hard time sleeping, um, if you need to understand how to have good, better gut health, which impacts your energy, um, my wife is a very great resource in that area. And um, she has a website, or she does. Don't don't I'll, I'll mess that up as well. Okay. But um, just healing like, hands. Look up for it on Facebook right. in Lakeland, and, Florida. And um. Follow her on Instagram. She is on Instagram under Healing Hands. Healing Hands, that's and good. also Kia Troutman, uh, holistic coaching, I believe, is also another one that she's under. Fantastic. And she does that. Is that a side job for her, or is that that's her main thing? Besides right? the babies, yeah. Besides the newborns, her, exactly. Besides, it's besides our, our sons, um, her main thing is her 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 business. Is the next thing that she does. Um, she slowed down a little bit on the real estate side because of um, just the energy that it takes and, and wants to be in that space of calm and peace, but she still um, service, services clients that, that refer her. What brokerage? Um, I know for, for a while she's been with La Rosa Prestige. Okay. Um, is, is what I'm aware of. Fantastic. But, well, if, if, if we can get customers for you, how would they contact you? So 
the easiest way um, to contact me, um, we all have smartphones. Yep. And if you ain't got, if you're not in the smartphone, you're behind. There's no doubt about it. And so with smartphones, if you go to ashleytroutman.mm.com, there is a website that pulls up and people can go to that website. Does it research for you? Research yeah, you? Can do a little research on that. Fantastic. I'm actually working on putting some new things on the website. Okay. Um, but there's a web, the website there, ashleytroutman.nm.com. Has the address, has my office number on there, um, has what we I like to call my value proposi proposition. Um, it's the first thing you encounter when you come on there. But then there's also information about my team. Um, you get an understanding of the folks that uh, help me deliver on the promise um, to our clients right now. And then you can look at um, other tabs in there as well, products and services, uh, planning, what that process looks like. Um, but then, most importantly, not most importantly, but um, also as important, there's a schedule a meeting button. So if you just hit schedule a meeting, it opens up my calendar and it shows you I think three, days out, that way. three days out how you can get on the calendar. That's, that's a very easy way to do it. And of course you can also, I'm, I'm a, even though I have this technology, I'm pretty old fashioned as well. It's nothing wrong with a phone call. Um, Ashley, I uh, can be reached on my cell at 863-661-0414. 863-661-0414 is, is the cell number. Call, text, I'm available. Um, I probably won't have answer after a certain time period, typically after, after six, um, if it's business related, but we'll get back to you right away after the, uh, the next day. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your time very much. I got to meet uh, Gal. Mm -hmm. I met him on two different occasions over there at the, at the well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, great guy. And they named that uh, parks, that bus stop parking lot. He yeah. got that name on there. Yeah, yeah, I was there that day. Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. That was a big deal. Um, I know he, he worked quite a bit on the, um, when he was on the commission and also served as mayor. He, he was a I would say he was the, the go-to person at the time when it was was, was related to transit issues. Um, he, um, I think Lakeland is further ahead than most cities in Polk County because of the transit-oriented transit -oriented development um, um, policy that they have. Uh, what that means is whenever a new, a um, existing structure is repurposed um, for some for some reason, that part of the impact fee that the um, that the individuals or the businesses will pay uh, when they are re repurposing that uh, that structure is for a bus stop to be added into that in, in, the, in near that facility. So that's why you you start to have started to see uh, more bus stops along the way um, over the years is because of that. And if you go to other cities, they in Polk County specifically, they probably won't have that as many. Um, because of that that particular policy that they that they they implemented years ago, and he was one of the champions for that. That's awesome. Um, and there's a number of other things that he he was he was known for in that in that arena, um, as well. But things like that is why you. Yeah, see I that, just that I went to a Toronto for vacation, and the public transportation was incredible. They, you can get from one place, you know, it's like almost like Europe. They know what they're doing, mm -hmm. and that is so important that people are able to get where they need to go and want to go. So having that infrastructure here in Lakeland is great for our future. Sure. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, definitely the groundwork. I mean, the uh, uh, ground, the ground floor is there. Um, it has to be built upon. Obviously, I've tried to ride up the transit system myself um, during a work day, and. Um, it was fun to do it, but it was also challenging as well. You know, the the gaps in, in between along the way as far as the timing that it takes to get to the next, uh, from the, uh, the bus to come to that stop. I think they run like every 30 minutes as opposed to every 10, like in uh, some areas. Um, but I made it work between Uber and the Citrus. Oh, you cheated. And you Uber cheated. And walking. <laughs> 
You did that thing, you use Uber that same day, you call yeah. that public transportation? Yep. Uh oh. Yep. I did Uber from the house to uh, my first meeting that morning, <laughs> and I walked from the coffee shop to the bus terminal, and I caught, got on the bus, rode the bus ter bus around town until I got out to Polk State College, but because the next stop wasn't until we got, in the, we got into downtown Martinville, I had to get off there so I could make my next stop, so I called Uber from there, and they took me to my next stop. <laughs> A lot of people don't get that yeah. opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So we, we made it work. We made it work. It was just a little, we had, yeah. we had to piece it all together. That there it shows the holes that may be need work in the future. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I remember, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was a kid growing up in, in Hamilton, Ohio, um, I used to take the city bus. And to this day, I remember climbing up on the bus and putting my quarter and my dime in. Mm -hmm. And we got on the bus and he pulled a thing. I talked to somebody, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and they said it was like two or three dollars now. Mm -hmm. I remember it being 35 cents for the public bus. Yeah. Do you know how much it is How much it is now? I have no idea. I, I, it was I a couple bucks. Yeah, two or three say, dollars. Yeah, two or three dollars still, I believe. And it was a nickel for a transfer. Mm -hmm. You put in 35 cents, and I said, I need to go to further. It was a nickel. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that as clear as day. Yeah. And I know that's not like that with inflation and all that today. Yeah. Yeah. It's tougher and tougher on the people who don't can't afford to pay car insurance and car things. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely a reality that um, that we live live in, and it's something that I, um, I I'm aware of every day. I mean, the work that I do, um, talking to clients about uh, the increase that they're experiencing on their um, you know cost of living, uh, repair costs. Talked to the gentleman yesterday, and he get. Um, the disbursement from his investment so he can pay for repairs around his house um, and how he thought the cost was going to be here but it ended up uh, yeah. more than that so it's it's definitely a reality um, for sure that we that we deal with every day and whenever we see all those changes in the marketplace um, like that 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 um, oftentimes will impact the conversation that I'm having with, with clients as well um, because it, it creates fear um, it creates uncertainty, uh, but like I shared with someone recently, the, the most important thing that, that um, myself or if there's anybody, um, any other um, advisor in that space, the most important thing if they're doing it, doing it the right way that they can bring to that moment is just clarity for them. Um, reminding them about what their goals are, um, they're long term, um, they're not short term, like this, this momentary setback, um, and because of that, if these are still the goals, then we just need to continue to move forward in the plan. And so being that clear voice for them in that moment is is what it is that uh, we, we bring. Right. That's the great value that we bring whenever you're working with um, an advisor, whether yeah. it may be, whether it be me or um, anyone else that's in the, in the marketplace, um, that having that, that person you trust and uh, respect in that space um, is important in those moments. Yeah, sure. especially with a toolbox that's wide and it shows even more importance with inflation. When you think it's gonna be one price, ends up being a lot more, that shows the importance of planning in advance anyway. Mm -hmm. So the more you plan, the more you take your personal finances serious, the easier it'll be when you do have that house repair, when you do need to pull a little bit out, right. you've got more available. So it does show how important it is to plan in advance yeah, for, for sure. your personal finances. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it very much, Ashley. Is there anything else I can, we can do to uh, promote you? Because, like I said, I yeah. promote everybody. I mean, every, any, anyone that you believe we could be of service to, what, what we're finding a lot, um, Don, is that uh, the people that we're able to impact and help the most um, um, right now are, especially as the team grows, are those individuals that are just getting crushed in, in taxes and they're looking wow. at they're looking at um, opportunities to create some um, taxation optionality um, what we find that those people who those people are are typically business owners that are really successful and making a great income and um, you know really really growing in their revenue um, uh, based in their business um, we, we, we can help them the most because they have problems that um, we have solutions to their problems that they ordinarily won't, won't don't have access to because it's not um, it's not.
not always the, the run-of-the-mill solution, right? Um, and there are certain products that um, people that are under certain thre income thresholds have access to that they no, no longer have access to. And so we, we can bring solutions to those, to those taxation problems. Um, so as you're out and about and you're meeting successful business owners that are, again, just knocking the cover off the ball and, and, and doing really well in their business, we just might be able to be a resource to them. That's fantastic because uh, you're you're working, you got your business, and you want to save the money and the time that you put in. Why give it to the government? I mean, pay your fair share, but mm -hmm. you don't need to give more than your share. Yeah. So take exactly. those tax breaks that are out there. Right. And if you don't know how to wear them, contact Ashton. Exactly. Exactly. And then you also want to set the. Um, typically, there's a succession to um, that business that you want to um, be thoughtful about as well. Um, Sometimes people are being very successful in their business, but they're running it like it's a, um, a small little uh, organization as opposed to this, this larger um, uh, organization. And so we want to bring solutions to the table for them that, and, and awareness um, of their, of their short, shortcomings so that they can uh, start seeing this uh, for the great asset that, that it is and the generational impact that, that it can make um, also. So, do you offer like a, a free evaluation or consultation? Yeah, the first the first meeting is a is somewhat of a, of a get to know, kick the tires around conversation. It's exploratory, I should say, uh, where we where we just talk about our process, and then we also learn more about that individual, where they are, and where they've been, and where they're going. Um, and in that conversation, we can identify whether or not. A, if we're a good fit to work with, with them, and B, if, they, if, they're, if we're a good fit to, um, well, if they're a good fit to work with us. Um, there's, because sometimes we can't, we can't help um, certain individuals, or sometimes the, the individuals don't feel um, that what we bring will be valuable. You know, sure. So it's a mutual uh, partner of ways at that point. Uh, we do try to get them with someone that may be a better for them if, if we're not the right fit. Um, or the resources to them that we can help them with. That's fine. It's, the, it's just a, an exploratory engagement at that point. It's that initial conversation. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I, uh, I call them projects in my mind. You know, maybe we're gonna connect on this project. Maybe we're not gonna connect on this project, but maybe another project in the future. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I call them projects. You know, I'm sorry it didn't work out this time, but maybe, and you go back and it was just not the right time, so now it is the right time. Yeah. It's a different product, so you never know. Yes, sir. Well, Ashley, I appreciate you showing up here, and uh, we'll promote you as much as we can. A um, little content from my site, trying to sell a couple of hats and a couple of t-shirts is all I do. Yeah. So just content on my website. Okay. You have a fantastic day. God Thank bless. You, Thank man. you so much for your time. Absolutely.